Hi there and welcome to my channel. It's so nice to have you back here. Now first I apologize for being a little late with my video this week, but I've actually got a fairly good reason for that. Now because I've been getting quite a good response from you guys on my past videos regarding filming underwater, I've decided to take some more scuba related trips in the second half of this year and I've spent some time over the last couple of days actually planning out those trips for the next six months. So just to give you a bit of an idea what's going to happen, in August I'll be flying over to California to participate in a underwater videography competition in Monterey, which is going to be a preparation competition for the World Championship in Underwater Videography, which will be held in Tenerife in September later this year. In October then I'll be flying to Bonaire in the Caribbean, um, working for a hotel there, capturing a tech diving event that they will be holding during the first week of October. And right after coming back from Bonaire, I'll only have a few days back home to repack and then I'll be on my way to Australia, to the Great Barrier Reef. First of all, we'll be spending a couple of days on a um, sailing boat. One of my best friends actually has a skipper license, so we'll be spending um, those days sailing the Whitsunday Islands on our private little um, sailing yacht. And after that, we'll be heading up to Cairns and out to the Great Barrier Reef for some liverboard diving there. And I'm really excited about that trip in particular. So as you can see, there is going to be plenty of new material, plenty of new things that we will be able to cover on this channel when it comes to filming underwater. So if you're interested in that topic but have not subscribed to my channel yet, please make sure to do so, so you're not missing out on any of the content that will be put up here in the coming month. And now without any further ado, let's get to today's topic. Today is going to be a very short video, but an important one because I wanna share with you my settings that I use on my GH5S when filming underwater. Coming up. So once you've turned your camera on, the first thing you want to do is go into the menu and go to system frequency, set that to 24 hertz cinema mode, you have to turn off your camera and then turn it right back on and now you're in 24 frames per second cinema mode. You can then choose the quality of your um, footage and what I normally choose there is 4K, 10 bit. 24 frames per second. Um, I actually prefer 24 frames per second, um, same as when we talk about cinematic looking footage on land, I think that the 24 frames per second does give the underwater footage a little bit more of a cinematic look to it. So I choose that and um, the only reason why I would shoot in another um, frame rate than the 24 frames per second is if I want to slow down the footage in post then I would shoot with 60 frames per second obviously with the GH5 eternally that would not be possible in 10 bit so you'd have to go down to 8 bit color depth which is still okay but it doesn't give you as much flexibility when it comes to post production um, with your footage that way. So having set our frame rate to the desired rate, we can now go and set our color profile. Um, and I normally use natural as my color profile and I've adjusted that slightly. So I've uh, pulled down the contrast all the way to minus five and I've done the same with the saturation. I've pulled that down to minus five as well, which gives me uh, a slightly flatter um, image and I find that easier for post-production afterwards not having too much contrast and too much um, saturation in the image to start off with. Now if you're interested about how I edit my um, videos and how I do my color correction on my underwater footage 
one of the next videos that I will bring out on this channel will be exactly about that topic. So having set up the color profile as well, we're basically done. There's not much more that you need to set up. A lot of the other parameters you will actually uh, change as you're shooting. Now, one thing I want to point out is your shutter angle. Um, so you want to keep that on 180 degrees, which is double the frame rate, so that you get that natural looking motion blur in your footage. The only other parameters that you will need to change and those you will need to change frequently during your dives is your um, aperture and your ISO. Now, depending on the situation that you're trying to capture, you will need to adjust those two settings. In regards to the aperture, if you're shooting wide angle and you're trying to capture a whole like reef scene underwater, I recommend to use an aperture of 8.0 or higher so that most of your image will be in focus. Uh, on the other hand, if you're doing macro work, if you're capturing small stuff and you want to get that nice blurry background, then you should be working with apertures of, let's say, 3.2, 3.5 or lower to be able to get some blurred out background. But that obviously depends a lot on your shooting situation and I cannot give you general guideline for how to set the things. Um, the aperture and the ISO, that's something that you will have to figure out while diving and while trying to take the shots. One last thing that I can recommend to you is that I can highly recommend using your histogram when shooting underwater. Sometimes it's really hard to see through the small tiny uh, screen whether or not your um, framing, your, your picture is properly exposed and by having the um, histogram open, as you can see right there, having that one open will then give you a very, very easy and accurate way of determining whether or not your exposure is correct. I cannot tell you how many times I thought that the exposure was okay uh, as seen on the screen and then later on bringing it onto the computer, um, I had to realize that my exposure was actually off, that it was either too dark or either too bright. And if I had used my histogram, I could have avoided that quite easily and I would not have had to throw away some footage. And that's basically all the settings that you need to adjust, in my opinion, to get a nice looking image straight off the camera and an image that will uh, be quite easily to work with in post-production. So once you've set your camera to these settings, you're pretty much good to go. And the only thing that you need to do then while you're underwater and while you're setting up for your shots is making sure that you do a manual white balance um, quite frequently. Now, the way I do the manual white balance is by using um, a white slate. Um, this is actually my, uh, one of my instructor slates from back when I was working as a scuba diving instructor, but it works perfectly fine. Any white or gray slate will actually work for that purpose. Or alternatively, you can also just point the camera towards a sandy patch and um, adjust the white balance that way. But do keep in mind that um, once you know how you want to frame your shot, you should actually be um, doing the uh, manual white balance, pointing the camera in the same general direction. So if you're trying to shoot a reef from up towards the surface, that should be your angle too while you're doing your manual white balance. If you're shooting something on the sand, then of course, yes, you can use the sand to manually adjust the white balance, but don't adjust your white balance by pointing to the sand and then turning around and shooting something up to the surface. You will not get a proper white balance there. All right, and that's already it for today, guys. Those were my preferred settings that I use when filming with my GH5S in the Naughty Cam housing underwater. So if this video was useful to you, if you got something out of it, please feel free to hit that like button, letting me know that you enjoyed the video. Also, if you have not subscribed to the channel yet, please consider that too, so you're not missing out on any future videos regarding underwater filmmaking that will be coming up here in the near future. 
Thanks again for watching and I will see you next week.